So we had an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the PAT. Purdue has just picked up another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on its sideline. That's Jeff Brom yapping at the officials. Purdue already got a sideline warning on the Jason Simmons kick return in the first quarter. And two times, that's a flag. Purdue is going to be kicking from its own 10-yard line. That's big for field position. Syracuse needs a touchdown to win this game and will have an opportunity to start the drive in a good spot. But as of right now, two consecutive touchdowns from Purdue has it in the lead, 29-25. O'Connell's 10th 350-yard passing game of the season. That's the second best in program history, only trailing Drew Brees, who had a dozen. This is when you could really use Trevor Pena. Pena not playing today with an injury. We haven't heard why that is. Instead, it's been Courtney Jackson, the deep man today for the Qs. So the kickoff from Chris Van Eckeren will come from the Purdue 10-yard line. He'll send it right to left. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. SU's frontline defenders are all standing on the 25-yard line in Purdue's territory. And Van Eckeren going to start his walk up from the two. <laughs> 51 seconds, SU down by four. High flying kick, Jackson tapping his chest, he wants it. He catches it at the 25, bursts forward, cuts it out right side, sidesteps the defender at the 40, and gets up to the 50 before he's pushed out of bounds. Courtney Jackson with a 25 yard return, and Syracuse has half a field to gain to take this game and take the win. Garrett Schrader waltzes out of the huddle towards the Syracuse offensive line. The drive will start right at midfield on the Block S logo. And SU will need to travel 50 yards as they try to win their first game over a Big Ten opponent since 2013. Three timeouts left for the Qs. That's big for SU, three timeouts, no timeouts for Purdue. Three receivers set for the orange, Schrader in the gun. Receives the snap, dropping back to pass. Throws over the middle of the field, incomplete. Off the right shoulder of Chris Jefferson, the Purdue safety. He tapped his helmet after the play, should have had that interception. Pass was intended for Gadsden, and it's second and 10. Jefferson has, quote, the best ball skills defensive coordinator Ron English has ever seen. He had the 72-yard puke six against <laughs> Penn State where he threw up on the sideline, but that one almost a pick, almost a game ender. Second and 10 from midfield. Schrader gets the snap, looking right, throws it for Jones near sideline, batted away. No flag flies. Corey Trice with blanket coverage on Isaiah Jones, and it's third down and 10. Seen a couple of those. That's how Syracuse got its touchdown. Trice was right up in Jones's body, but looked back at the last second and knocked the ball away with his right hand. Didn't push Jones out of bounds. Trice only played in two games last year before an ACL injury took away his season. He's back and playing his best ball. Third and 10 for midfield. Schrader back to pass. Rolls out right side, keeps his eyes downfield. Stiff arms Jenkins, extends the play and lofts it out of bounds. It skips off the 40-yard line, incomplete. There's a flag on that side of the field, though, at the 30-yard line, and the officials are pointing the way of Purdue. <laughs> Holding infraction against Purdue gives Syracuse a free first down and moves the ball forward to the 40-yard line. Three crucial Purdue penalties putting Syracuse in a decent position to win this game. Single high safety coverage from Purdue. Schrader in the gun, three receiver set. He gets the snap at the 45, looks left. Pressure in his face, rolls out right, keeps his eyes downfield, flips it out of bounds. That's an incomplete pass, a dangerous one no less. Chris Jefferson and Scotty Humpick had the pressure for Purdue. No intentional grounding as Schrader was out of the pocket but the offensive lineman barely got away with the hold. Looked like it was Kalen Ellis, the left guard, grabbing Chris Jefferson's jersey as he burst through the middle of the offensive line. And Syracuse could be back at the 50, but luckily at the 40. Second and 10 from the SU, make that at the Purdue 40, near side hash. Schrader takes the snap, 
Dropping back to pass. Eyes downfield. Loss of the far sideline and connects with Alford. He high points the football at the Purdue 15, reels it in with one hand, and falls out of bounds. Syracuse going quick to the line with 17 seconds to go. The Orange trailing Purdue 29-25. Schrader barking out the orders. But we get a stoppage. The officials want to take one more look at that Damian Alford catch. He was wide open in between two Purdue defenders on the far sideline. Schrader with just enough mustard on the football to slot it into his big receiver. But did he land in bounds? Looking up at the replay monitor, he did. That left toe touches inbounds right at the Purdue 15 yard line. And that should be an SU first down into the Purdue red zone. Alford beat Reese Taylor in one on one coverage. Broke his way with that fade route down the sideline. We're still looking at that left foot. Alford, six foot six, got way high in the air, pogo vaulted. The left toe lands in bounce, but the whole foot is questionable. Wow! What I just mentioned is why they just overturned the call. The toe got down in bounce, but the whole foot did not land in bounce. Alford's heel hit on the white line on the far side sideline. That's an incomplete pass. To complete a catch, you must have your entire foot land in the field of play. Football's a game of inches. You heard why right there. So a big play turns into a third and 10 from the Purdue 40. Schrader gets the snap, arcs it down the far sideline, up top for Jones, incomplete. Reese Taylor all over Jones in coverage, and a flag flies in late. The judge on the far side of the field was looking for his flag in his pocket. That's a pass interference penalty, and it'll give Syracuse a first down. Isaiah Jones is limping off the field. Jones holding his right shoulder immediately surrounded by trainers. So someone else has to be the deep ball threat. So a fresh set of downs for the Cuse that moves the ball up to the Purdue 25 yard line. First and 10, 12 seconds to go. Purdue leading Syracuse 29-25. Counting the, penalt the penalties on the kickoff, that's four infractions for Purdue, 55 yards. Three receiver set, Schrader gets the snap. Dropping back to pass, pressure in his face, lofts it downfield, has Gadsden, he catches it, and scores! Schrader, falling to his behind, finds Gadsden in the corner of the end zone, the loft good, second touchdown of the day for Gadsden, and it's 31-29 Syracuse with seven seconds to go. Unbelievable from Garrett Schrader. Pressure in his face, he doesn't care. Gadsden open upfield. And he gets his second touchdown of the game to put the Cuse on top with seconds to go. Andre Schmidt's PAT split the uprights, but before the kick, Syracuse spent a timeout. This place is going bonkers after the Gadsden score. But before this kick from Schmidt, Dino Babers wants to talk things over. A 25-yard drop in the bucket. Gadsden runs the corner route, starts up the hash, breaks towards the far pylon. Schrader gets it over backup corner Bryce Hampton, who hasn't played a whole lot today, was in for pass coverage. An amazing touch throw, just like last year against Virginia Tech when Schrader hit Damian Alford for the game winner with under a minute left. Two catches for 24 yards all of last year for Gadsden. He's got six for 112 and two scores today, and he's put Syracuse on top with seven seconds to go. 
a Syracuse offense that struggled to move the football all game long comes alive in the fourth quarter. And it's a party in the dome. A flag flies in at the five yard line as Purdue exited its huddle. Carlos Federello, Matthew Bergeron fired up right now. Might have a penalty against the Boilermakers here. Seems like Purdue has collectively just lost its cool. That's five penalties for Purdue. And if Payne Durham doesn't pick up that unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Chris Jefferson. And he has been booted out of this game. Wow, have things swung in Syracuse's favor. The wheels have fallen off the Boilermaker train. The caboose has been detached from the train. Syracuse leading Purdue 31-29 with seven seconds to go. But think about it, 30 yards of penalties after the touchdown from Payne Durham where Purdue went out in front. The holding on Corey Trice, the pass interference on Reese Taylor. Purdue fell apart in the final moments of the game just like in that opener against Penn State when the offense could do no right. And in the biggest stage of the game, the biggest moment of the game, Garrett Schrader delivers. His third touchdown pass of the game to Aronde Gadsden. And Schmidt on for the PAT. 31-29 SU, the point after would boost it to three. The kick on its way and it's good. Reese Taylor jumped offside in the Purdue defensive line. Schmidt sent it through anyway. It's 32-29 Syracuse with seven seconds and change remaining. The talk all season long, Ian. Dino Baber saying he thinks his team is different. The vibe around this team is different. The attitude is different. Today's game would be a great litmus test to see just how different this Syracuse team is. And when they have an opportunity to march down the field, win this ball game, they put themselves in a great position to do just that.